you know, you think think well. You know, we had had two weeks. We were able to rest up. Guys are starting to get a little chippy. I think we're tired of hitting ourselves. You know, we're really excited to play a really good Air Force team. But I think so far, so good. Does it come down to this is basically execution because you, you teams know each other so well. I mean, emotion may last a little bit, but it's just who executes better. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. It's the team that's able to keep their composure, uh, least amount of mistakes. Because like you said, we're both going to play hard. We're going to play hard. They're going to play hard. Both teams want it. It has nothing to do with effort or wanting it. It's the team that executes. I want to ask about Will. How has he improved over the course of this season? Um, have you seen him get better to this point from when he started? I think last week, uh, two weeks ago against Tulane, just that final drive was him. Okay. You know, our guys rallied around him, started off a little shaky, but, you know, continued to grind. But he's a tough, hard-nosed kid. He's a good leader. And I think our kids and our teams kind of embraced his personality. My ace research staff determined that this is the most times that two coaches in this rivalry have met. You guys, you and Troy Calhoun are meeting for the ninth time. That's never happened in an Air Force Navy rivalry that two coaches have met that many times. Does that familiarity kind of with um, in the coaching staff increase the rivalry a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, but they're good guys. I mean, they're, they're good coaches, they're good people. I mean, you know, they want to beat us, we want to beat them. We see each other in recruiting. You know, Clay Hendricks, old line coach, is a really good offensive line coach, but he's a good person too. They, they got good guys on their on their staff. Um, you know, Ron. You know, I mean, he was a head coach. Ron Vanderlyn. Vanderlyn was a head coach at Maryland. He's a good man, really good football coach. Coach Calhoun's a good guy. I mean, it's just compared. We want to beat them. They want to beat us. Um, I don't know if it's it's not so much about me or Troy. It's about our teams and our programs. Right. Injury-wise, uh, sorry, Keith. Yeah, okay. Josh Walker, you had mentioned that he got hurt against Tulane. How's he doing? Uh, he won't be back this game. Right. And DJ Grant Johnson, is he back at least no, practicing? He's uh, st starting to kick, but probably not, you know, maybe Houston. Okay. So we'll see there. Well, just one thing for me, Coach. Uh, Coach Calhoun was saying a couple of days ago about how satisfying it is to have the two academies doing so well, 3-0 coming into this game, but just the success that both – programs have had the last couple of years has really kind of uh, it, it's been good for college football in terms of the missions of the two schools and all that stands for I would assume that's something you probably agree with huh? yeah Keith and all three I mean Army's doing well too so I think for all three of us to do well at this time it's hard to compete at division one it's hard to win games and for you know us to be undefeated in Army to have only one loss and I think it really speaks a lot for all three programs but it's actually pretty cool to see well, another thing I was going to ask you about is that one area that's been dramatically improved for Navy, knock on something, <laughs> <laughs> knock on that wood, yes. is Fine. your kickoff coverage is much better. Uh, how much do you give Coach Yukata's credit for? Uh, makes done a phenomenal job. You know, he's just, he's, he and uh, R.B. Green, you know, makes in charge of it, and he's assigned R.B. Green to help him, and they've been doing a phenomenal job. I couldn't be more pleased with how we're doing. Uh, you know, we just got to continue, you know, to not pat ourselves on the back, just continue to try to get better, but really pleased with the way they're playing. What is your overall take on the special teams in general? Because that often is a factor in this game, special teams. I think for the most part we're doing okay. Obviously there's stuff to like to clean up. I mean, you know, we talked about a missed extra point last week. The missed field goal in a UConn game, I'll take that. I should have called a timeout as back right, coach. The, the long snapper was late getting on the field, right? Yeah, and I just I let the operation go, but – Place kickers like their routine. They yes. like to see their snapper out there. They like yes. to see the holder. And I think it kind of put him in a funk when he we didn't see our snapper right. out there. And I just messed up. I, I should have just called timeout. So other than that, he's been kicking well. You know, we're doing okay so far. But like you said, special teams are going to be huge in this game. Player, since, he's, since the beginning of the season, what has he improved on the most, do you think? I mean, just leadership. I mean, that's – the plan is going to come. Yeah. He's had enough reps over the years. You know, um, just got to get used to doing it in the game. It's just a matter of now focusing and, you know, getting us in the right play. That's the biggest thing. Um, but for me, the last game, Tulane, the biggest drive, the last drive of the game, I mean, he put the team on his back. Right. Took us down the field and we scored. You know, so to me, th that was the biggest growing point for him. The team believes in him now. They know he can get it done. He's their leader. You know, so for me, that was a turning point for him for, for this season. I just got to build on that and keep it going for the rest of the season.
you work with so many quarterbacks here. Is there something about him that kind of stands out or makes him different than others? Or I mean, they, they, they all have something special about him. I mean, he's probably the smartest one, I guess, out of all of them. You know, yeah. as far as being like a three nine or something. But um, again, just his leadership. I mean, and just the patience. You know, you always appreciate that. You know, ne never complain. You know, just sat back and just you know waited his turn. You know, and uh, now his turn is here, and he, and, and he stepped up for us. Ask you a little bit about the Air Force defense. What are you seeing out of that crowd? Just a you know. Uh, a bunch of guys are going to play hard. You know, this game is always, we always say it's going to be a fair fight. You know, there's no advantages on either side. I mean, about the same size on both sides of the ball. Um, it won't be like, you know, these guys we've been seeing this past week, you know, 300 pound guys up front, but at the same time, they're going to play twice as hard. You know, so it's, it's going to be a tough game. Um, very physical. They know what we're doing. There'll be no option factor, no, no guys losing the ball. It's going to come down to just executing. Um, you know, taking care of the football is, is the biggest point of it. By executing and finding a way to get some big plays and, uh, and not flinching. The first thing that flinches is going to be a team that, that gets hurt. Yards tend to be at a premium in this game, and so you really got to grind it out, don't you? You got to grind it, you know, and uh, we're built for that. We're ready for it. You know, um, again, it's, it's been who we are for the past. You know, years we've been here just trying to find a way to grind it out. But the main thing is, about us is, is find something that works for us, you know, and. Uh, and again, just kind of mixing things up formation-wise, but um, just grind it out and, and get the ball to our playmakers and just and just hit it and just grind it, grind it, and just, again, hopefully find a way to win the game. It seems that on the years that you've had success against Air Force, you've been able to get the fullback going. And I know that they they cover up the center, right? They have a nose the tackle. Our front team, yes. Right. Well, uh, first on that front, do you use Maurice Morris in this game because of that fact? Do we have a big guy, or do you think Parker's play, your best? We're going to play them both. You know, I'm definitely my uh, – Mo has a lot more mass, won't get knocked back, you know, and that's always a plus. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is just trying to find out, um, find something that works, find a family to get the fullback going. I mean, we got two pretty good ones. Um, we've been blessed over the years with some good fullbacks, and they've played well in this game. So we have to find a way to get to get those guys going, but also get the ball on the perimeter in our playmakers' hands, and also just find something through the air. Last year, we, were, we, we had some big plays in, in the passing games. Hopefully, we can find some more this year. That's the key. All right. And coach has put you in charge of this unit. He didn't want to see any more kickoff returns for touchdowns. I know that. Uh, so far, so good. Well, kind of tell me what was your thoughts on what to do to get this thing more sound? I think we just simplified some things, uh, changed personnel a little bit, tried to get guys that want to run down the field full speed. Um, it's not very complicated what we're doing. We're just going to try to find the best guys we can that are willing to sell out for the team. When do you look back at last year in the, the games where you gave up kickoff returns for touchdowns, what were the breakdowns? Was it a case to where maybe the kicker didn't kick it where the coverage was expecting it? Or how did that, what happened? A few times it was a kick was placed very poorly. But a lot of times with kickoffs, one of those things, if one guy gets out of their lane, they just need a little crease. And on all our big and returns, gone, right? all our big returns we got up last year, it was usually one guy that did the wrong thing, just simply stay in your lane, got out of his lane. And the other big return, we missed a tackle, which actually had decent coverage. Had one of our better guys on who's on our unit this year missed a tackle on it. But it's usually one guy on kickoff, and that's all it takes. So over the course of a season, will you shake it up? I mean, if you guys don't get on kickoff coverage forever, they, if you no, don't do the job, you may be off, this right? Is, this is probably the most competitive team there is you don't get many chances because anybody can run down the field full speed sell out for the team so we've already changed around about five six guys on really? and off. oh yeah so it's a constant, constant evaluation. every single day they're getting evaluated every single day we're going to move guys around we told them that so we're going to get the best guys on the field